Hello everybody, the Two for Life here, bringing you guys another deck profile this time around with uh, my Arrow Mages. I the finest deck, and I cannot wait till it comes out. I really hope they don't end up being high rarity or too hard to pull because it's a pretty fun deck to play. Um, it's really the first archetype to revolve around life points and life point gaining and all that crap, and it's really weird and how it works and stuff and the fact that you can play ring dragon or raw and still be fine it's funny so uh, yeah i'm gonna get done rambling here and let's get on with the deck profile i play three arrow on the pot basically this thing after it's put face up it cannot be destroyed by battle and during each pair's end phases you get 500 life points this card is really good um it <laughs> that 500 life points it just keeps gaining 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 and it really stacks up after a few turns I play three Arrow Maids Bergamot. Uh, basically, it's the only tribute summon monster. Like, you actually have to tribute for it sometimes, although that's what Nullfire is for. But, uh, she's level 6. She's 2400. She's the strongest one. She gets 1,000 attack points whenever you gain life points. And if your life points are higher, she does piercing. This thing can get up to 3900 with the field spell and everything, and it's just really crazy. She gets over just about everything you have to deal with. Uh, then there's, uh, I play three Kana, Kananga, I have really not figured out how to pronounce her, her name. I know all of these are named after, uh, like, uh, spices, I think they're spices at least, I know Jasmine is spice, um, and Rosemary is. But, uh, Kananga, basically what she does is by your life points is higher than your opponents, she reduces all of your opponent's monsters' uh, attack by 500 and also decreases their defense as well. And if you gain life points... She uh, bounces a spell trap card to your opponent controls, uh, which is pretty good. I wish it was destroy, but then I guess it would be too broken. Even though there is a few cards out there. Heck, I think there is one that actually does pop something if you gain life points. Although, I can't remember what it was called. Uh, then I played three Aroma, Aromades Jasmine. She's one of your main cards in the deck. Uh, she gets you a draw every time you gain life points. And she grants you an additional normal summon if you have more life points than your opponent. She is an overall really good card. Um, you either want to set her first turn or uh, like uh, switch her to defense with Rosemary, whenever, and I'll explain that whenever I explain her effect. But basically, you almost never want to have her in attack position, especially since she becomes a prime target for your opponent to attack. Then I th play three Aromades, Rosemary. Basically, if a uh, Pantap Monster you Control attacks your opponent and you have higher life points than your opponent, uh, your opponent cannot activate monster effects until the end of the uh, battle phase. Uh, sorry, not battle phase, until the end of the, that battle, until the end of the damage step. And uh, if you gain life points, you get to switch a uh, monster on the field as uh, battle position. So, like, uh, you can target a monster your opponent controls, a beat over it, or you can switch your Jasmine into defense and you don't have to worry about your opponent attacking over it when doing a ton of damage. I play two Golden Ladybug. Basically, what this does is you get life points during your standby phase to reveal it. It stays revealed and you get 500 life points. It's an overall really good card for the deck. Uh, you can really either play this or uh, Solemn uh, Wishes, or heck, you can play mix of them all. But uh, I personally prefer Golden Ladybug because then you don't have to uh, worry about your opponent missing it or anything. And uh, really, then your opponent uh, kind of gets worried about it and has to like, mind crush it if they want to get rid of it. Uh, three Lone Fire Blossom, everything in here is a plant except for Golden Ladybug and Ra over here. And speaking of Ra, I play one of him. He, You don't have to really worry about his whole life point losing effect and stuff because you're going to start gaining life points back right away. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. And usually if you summon him, it's whenever you're going for game. You don't have to play him. I just play him as a one of just for attack and just for the heck of it, really, to be completely honest. And he's won me a few games. It's really funny. Um, although it's mainly uh, Bergamot over here who wins games. <clears throat> then I play three to field spell. This allows you to get uh, 500 life points if you control a uh, aroma monster. And then all monsters you currently control and all monsters you summon afterwards get 500 attack points and defense until the end of your opponent's next turn. And uh, it even stays even if this card uh, leaves the field. And then if a aroma monster you control is destroyed by battle or by a card effect and sent to the graveyard, you get a thousand life points. <laughs> so it's really cool and it's really trollsy. Um, it's one of your opponent's main MST targets, so you really got to try and uh, protect it or get it back or something or search it with terraforming. Uh, then I play three magic planner. You play a crap ton of continuous trap cards. And I think I play a total of nine. So this card, along with Jasmine, you just got a constant draw engine over here. <laughs> 
two MST, uh, one terraforming. I've been thinking about playing two, but I don't really know what to cut out for it. I'd probably cut a Call of Haunted for it, though, if I really did. Uh, speaking of Call of Haunted, I played three. This is mainly just going to get uh, Jasmine back if she does die, and uh, to get Bergamot. Um, and also to reuse Lo uh, Lone Fire, <laughs> which is a funny thing to do. Uh, three draining shield. This allows you not only gain an opponent's attack, but also gain life points, and then trigger a, one of your aroma mages effects during your opponent's turn um, during the battle phase, which can be really useful and save your butt. Like uh, if your opponent tries to attack over Rosemary, you activate this, and you get add attack and you get life points. Then you get to activate Rosemary's effect to switch one of their other monsters to defense position, preventing any further attacks from that monster. It's a really good card in the deck. Um, if you want to play like destruction effects, you've got this right over here. Parching a parching win. Basically, if you gain life points, you can target a face-up monster your opponent controls and destroy it. And uh, I think yeah, you can only use its effect once per turn. <laughs> the other effect is if you control an aroma monster and your LP is higher than your opponent, at least 3,000 points. Then you can pay life points equal to the difference and destroy your face-up monsters your opponent controls whose total attack is less than or equal to the amount you paid. It's a really good card. It can either be a once pop, like a basically a Fissure or a Regeki. It's a really good card for the deck and uh, provides fair, some very much needed uh, monster destruction for the deck. And then there's Refreshing Wind. Basically, this card allows you to pay a thousand life points and add an aroma monster from your deck to your hand. You can do this once per turn in either way's turn, by the way. It's a really good card. The other effect is if you if your LP is less than your opponent's, you can gain 500 life points. This card is a really good card for the deck, and I think it's a mandatory 3 up for the deck because it searches out every single one of your aromas. Sadly, you cannot add the field spell with it, otherwise uh, I wouldn't even be playing terraforming. <laughs> um, but that gaining life points and getting to pay a thousand in search is really really good for the deck. Now onto the extra deck. Now in general, you really do not go into the extra deck very often with this deck. It just does not need it. But, however, it is there if you do need it. I play one Sky Cavalry uh, Centauria, one number 49 Fortune Tune. By the way, I don't know why all of these are out of order or something. I've hit order a few times, but it just does not reorder, organize. Uh, one Leviathan Dragon, one Ragna Zero, uh, one Silent Honor Arc. Actually, Ragna Zero is really funny in combination with Kanaga, just saying. Uh, one Mavai of the Trees, which you can go into with multiple Kanaga. Uh, one guy got Giga Samurai, one guy got Cowboy, a Gachi Gachi, a Excidon, which you don't really go into very often. Like I said, I mean, you don't really go into very often uh, any of these extra deck monsters. Um, Dark Rebellion, uh, Dagusto Emerald, which is actually very useful since you will burn through your monsters relatively quickly. Uh, Castell, why does my bottom thing keep popping up? <laughs> Karen Gorgon, Anti Luminescent Knight. And good old Abyss Dweller for, you know, stopping those uh, monster effects in Grave. So, guys, tell me what you think of the deck. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Um, I cannot wait to see more of this deck now as it uh, comes out and more and stuff. I want to see them get some more, like, preferably spell and trap destruction. Maybe faster ways to summon because this deck does start off really slowly. I think it's got enough ways to the game life points right now, but I already can tell that they are going to get more ways. So, guys, again, thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Let's hear for life. Sign in. Here's that. There it is. Bye.